Teachers and school staff are now eligible for vaccinations in California. A high school teacher and a principal react to being closer to in-person learning. The Golden Globes kicked off award season with big wins for women of color. We'll hear from one of them and see how student filmmakers are reacting. And find out how playing sports and getting exercise is now easier for SC students near campus. Annenberg TV News starts now. Live from USC, you're watching Annenberg TV News. 9.1 million now vaccinations have been administered in the state of California. Positivity rate, that should make everyone feel a little bit more positive about where we are and where we're going, down to 2.3% today. And that's based upon a pretty healthy 243,000 tests that were conducted as part of the reporting period. Governor Newsom shares plans to reopen schools across California. Good evening, I'm Lauren Hebroni reporting from Los Angeles. And I'm Carolyn Casera, also reporting from Los Angeles. More than a million more people became eligible today for COVID-19 vaccinations. Vaccines are now available for teachers, grocery workers, and restaurant staff. While many educators are anxious to get back into the classroom, they want it done in a safe way. One teacher and school principal explained. As much as I love teaching and I've learned so much about doing it online, uh, I, I miss being with my students and being in the classroom. So this was a, yeah, this was a huge day and it means a lot. Now that I've been vaccinated, uh, it, it can't happen soon enough. I, you know, I obviously I have to wait for the second vaccine, but, but certainly I would, I would love to be back in the classroom. I think the one thing that we do know not to, to do is rush. And so as long as we don't do that, I think I have confidence that we'll think through everything that could possibly go wrong. Um, or at least most things, maybe not everything, but most things before we get to that point. California lawmakers have a new plan to get kids back in the classroom, vaccinated or not. $2 billion in grants will be available to schools opening kindergarten through second grade by the end of March. Schools with hybrid programs will also qualify. We expect that all of our TK to two classrooms open within the next month. We wanna see more happen beyond that for unified, going into red tiers, it's TK to six, and it's a commitment to one grade in middle and high school. SoFi Stadium in Inglewood is a new vaccination site exclusively for LA USC teachers and staff. The first doses of the Johnson & Johnson vaccines shipped out today. The single shot vaccine got emergency FDA approval for everyone age 18 and older. Hey, what vaccine is better than the other vaccine? In order to be able to determine that, you would have to compare them head to head. This was not done. We have three highly efficacious vaccines. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine requires one shot and is 85% effective. The Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine is two shots given 21 days apart and is 95% effective. While the two Moderna shots need to be given 28 days apart, they have an efficacy rate of 94%. An epidemiologist shares the importance of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine approval. Requiring one dose will make it even easier. And particularly for you know, populations that may be a little bit um, uh, more difficult to um, access, that we can take out uh, vaccines um, in vans, we can do pop-up um, services, particularly for more mobile populations, that one single dose, that one shot is gonna be really important. The company hopes to scale up vaccine production and distribution in the coming months with an ambitious goal of delivering 100 million doses by June. The House of Representatives passed a $1.9 trillion pandemic relief bill, which now heads to the Senate for approval. I'm Kimira Barr reporting from Los Angeles. The bill would include a $1,400 direct deposit to eligible Americans, $400 a week for jobless benefit supplements, and an extension of programs that would make Americans more eligible for unemployment insurance. It will also allocate $20 billion for COVID-19 vaccinations and $50 billion for COVID testing. I think to some extent, this is in fact a stimulus bill, but it also makes sense to think of it as a disaster relief bill. When viewed in that context and viewed as a necessary element to get us out of a very, very bad situation, uh, by distributing vaccines more quickly, by keeping people in jobs and in their homes, 
Um, I think it's probably a necessary package. The one snag in the Senate is expected to be the increase in minimum wage. While that may be thrown out of the package, Democrats say that the rest of the proposal is likely to pass. I'm Jennifer Kim, back with Trojans Around the Globe. Her education extends between two very different cultures, India and the US. And her degree stretches between two very different schools. USC sophomore Shrika Ramani is in Bangalore, India and is majoring in business and film. Bangalore is an amazing city. It's the one where we have the best weather across India. We have the best weather. We have amazing food. Um, we're a metropolitan, but we're also immensely cultured. So you won't find people that are only South Indian here. You will never find it. You will find people from every part of India. And I think that's the beauty of Bangalore, for sure. I feel like the problem with asynchronous, especially for someone that, that's very much in the arts field, um, is that you don't get the entire experience. Um, not only is 90% of your grading based on you know your interactions with your teachers your interactions with your you know your classmates that's your primary knowledge what i did was i took a, a large number of ge courses this semester because i didn't want to miss out on the cinema and business experience like many students taking classes on zoom shrika has created a special class schedule for virtual learning she's putting off subjects in her major until she's back on campus at usc the Golden Globe Awards has come under fire for its lack of diversity, but this year's awards made history with artists like actress Andra Day and director Chloe Zhao taking home big wins. Nomadland! Nomadland at its core for me is a, um, a pilgrimage through grief and healing. Um, so for everyone who has gone through this difficult and beautiful journey at some point, in their lives. This is for you. Chloe Zhao is the second woman and first Asian woman to win Best Director for her film Nomadland at the Golden Globes. The Golden Globes have been around for 78 years and USC film students say this historic event is long overdue. I don't think that um, they have nearly been given the recognition that they deserve and, and uh, hopefully the next generation can continue to change that with uh, Chloe Zhao, like the look of surprise on her face that like, oh, she was actually chosen, uh, was both beautiful and kind of unfortunate that one would have to feel like, like surprised. It's very disappointing that like, it even has to be a big thing that like three women directors were nominated because it's just, it just shouldn't even like have to be like a gender thing. An investigation revealed that the Hollywood Foreign Press Association's voting body has had no black members for over 20 years. A member of USC's film fraternity, Delta Kappa Alpha, spoke about the importance of diversity. Until people at the top recognize that diverse voices not only deserve to be heard, but need to be for us to just have better entertainment overall and to see each other as complete individuals holistically, then our, our grassroots efforts can, can only go so far, but we need everybody to embrace un underrepresented voices. The Hollywood Foreign Press Association announced their commitment to diversity and representation within their organization. Yet plans of what this would look like have not been specified. USC is finally beginning to reopen campus and first up is outdoor recreational facilities. According to an email sent to students, Rec Sports has received permission to reopen some facilities, such as Cromwell Track and Fields and the Utensu Aquatic Center. USC junior Anna Rogers, who lifeguards at the Aquatic Center, says right now, not only is the center figuring out specific COVID protocols for the pool, but that it's working towards getting its lifeguards recertified so the facility can open. I think one thing about the lifeguarding position is provided we're at the like um, the outdoor pool, like I feel like it's pretty safe in terms of exposure because you're not within six feet of people. You're at least six feet off the ground. So if that vertical distance is anything, you know, um, that's reassuring. And like while you're waiting, you can while you're guarding, you can probably wear a mask. So I, I don't foresee it being a huge exposure. And I feel like there's a lot of ways to make that safe. To reserve one of these facilities and view their hours of operation, visit myrexsports.usc.edu. Students must make reservations in order to access the facilities. They also need to follow USC's COVID testing protocols and complete a Trojan check to get on campus. Happy March, everyone. I'm Rachel Grove reporting from Los Angeles. 
To kick things off, Nika Gubiade, a USC sophomore, became the first ever African-American diver to win a Pac-12 title in USC history. I got the chance to speak with her this afternoon to hear more about this historic title and her plans for the future. At first, I was just really excited. Um, wasn't something that I was expecting, partly because of COVID, we've had a really, really short season. Knowing that I'm the first African-American in like USC's history, or at least swimming and diving history, to win is means a lot to me. I hope that I can be someone that younger people can look up to and see that they can also get to a very high level of competition and do well. Agambiade's career is one for the history books and is far from over. Now with March Madness Month starting today, let's head over to Bianca Bueno for more on USC Hoops. That's right, Rachel. March is going to be a thrill as the regular season comes to a close. SC Hoops takes on Stanford Wednesday after losing their last two games to Utah and Colorado. The Trojans now lost three of their last four and have fallen from the top of the Pac-12. The Trojans were sluggish offensively against Colorado and Utah, shooting under 40% in both contests and averaging 61.5 points per game. The number 19 ranked squad will have to defeat Stanford on Wednesday and UCLA Saturday for a shot at the conference title. UCLA and Oregon are both ahead of USC and play each other in Eugene on Wednesday. It's going to be really pivotal that they get their offense together from within the perimeter. And that's really going to set them apart, especially if they can continue that throughout the second half and hold the other teams back. You know what, Bianca, I completely agree. Stanford's offense has truly been a force to be reckoned with this past season. So I'm really interested to see how the Trojans handle that in Wednesday's game. Looking forward to Saturday, as we've said in other previous sessions, the Trojans are really going to have to step it up against the Bruins if they want to prove their prowess and prove their team ability. You're right. It's been close games every time, especially when they played Stanford earlier in the season, and they're going to have to finish all the way through. And then that's all we have for sports this week. The flower fields at Carlsbad Ranch opened today for a nine-week spring season. After closing last March because of the pandemic, visitors can expect a colorful and brilliant show while practicing social distancing and getting some fresh air. Wow, Lauren, that sounds like a beautiful way to spend an afternoon outdoors in quarantine. I totally agree. I also think it's a great idea for students looking to plan their wellness day next week. I couldn't agree more. I have nothing on my agenda for that day, but I'm definitely adding that to my list. That's it for Annenberg TV News. Thanks so much for watching. From everyone at Annenberg Media, have a great night.